If you follow or talk to anyone who's interested in weight loss and diet and especially eating whole plant-based foods, then you've probably seen a lot of people say that drinking smoothies and juice is bad for weight loss and even causes weight gain compared to eating fruits in their whole form. And I've also seen a lot of people say that this is why so many people gain weight on the raw till four diet because it's so much easier to eat five bananas in smoothie form than it would be to eat five bananas in their whole fruit form. So it's just easier to just fill yourself with calories on smoothies or juices. But on the other side of the debate, I've seen people swear by going on juice or smoothie diets for weight loss. And I'm going to use two scientific studies to get to the bottom of this debate and answer the question of whether it's better for weight loss to drink smoothies, juice, or fruit in its whole form. And this can apply to other types of blended foods as well. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I'm a PhD candidate using scientific studies to help you with your weight loss, health, and nutrition goals. And I especially like to look at the science surrounding a lot of the common myths and debates that float around in the media and influencer circles, because hardly anyone actually looks at the scientific studies on it, whereas I love to do that. And in the first part of this video, I will be directly looking at how smoothies versus juice versus fruit affects satiety and how much you eat later. And after that, I will be getting more into the specifics of what's different between smoothies and juices. So be sure to stick around till the end. And if you generally like to eat a whole foods plant-based diet like I do, then I think you'll find this topic especially interesting because I've seen a lot of back and forth on whether or not blending counts as processing if you're just doing it yourself. And the reason that these whole foods plant-based diets are so good for weight loss and health in general is because the foods aren't processed. And so the question is, does blending your fruit into a smoothie count as processing in terms of how it affects your satiety levels and your hunger? And the first study looked at how smoothies versus juice versus whole fruit affected how much you actually wanted to eat at a later meal. So for example, whether you have fruit or smoothies or juice at breakfast and how that affects how much you eat at lunch. And they also looked at how full and hungry these different types of meals made people feel. So first, the researchers gave participants 130 calories of either smoothie, juice, or fresh fruit, so same number of calories in every case, and then looked at how much they ate at a test meal that consisted of cheese scones and chocolate chip muffins. So the idea was to see how much having these three different types of fruit modality affected how much people ate later. And the reason this is really relevant and important for weight loss is because if you have 400 calories of smoothie and 400 calories of fruit salad, but one of them makes you eat way more at lunch than the other one, then you probably want to focus on eating the thing that makes you eat less later if you're trying to lose weight. And so this is called satiety and it's really important that the food you eat satiates you. But so the big question is, does blending your food or juicing it affect how much it's gonna help you with weight loss and satiety? And first, the researchers looked at how hungry or full people felt after eating this fruit in the three different forms. And they found that, probably unsurprisingly, people were most full after the fruit salad and they had the biggest reduction in hunger after eating the 130 calories of fruit salad than they did after eating the smoothies or juice. And the order was fruit salad was the most filling, followed by smoothie, followed by juice. But that's just how the people felt about the different meals. But what happened to how much they ate later? So the researchers had one group eat this test meal 10 minutes after the fruit or smoothie or juice, and another group ate their test meal two hours later. And in both cases, the breakfast type that led to the least eating later was actually the smoothie. So people who drank smoothies ate smaller lunches than people who drank juice or ate fruit salad. And the crazy part is the next best thing was actually juice compared to fruit salad. So just to recap, the best thing to eat for breakfast, to be less hungry at lunch and therefore eat less later, was actually a smoothie. And then the next best thing was juice, and the worst thing was actually whole fruit in a fruit salad. And remember, these three different types of food were all the same number of calories. So crazily, perhaps, it looks like actually blending the fruit into a smoothie led people to eat less later on than having that fruit whole or having it as a juice.
I have some more results for you, but for a little interim uh, chat here, it's kind of crazy that it seems like both sides of the debate that I talked about at the beginning are wrong, and kind of, because the juice people think that a juice for breakfast is gonna be your best thing because it's really nutrient dense and very high in water, whereas the totally unprocessed food people think that fresh fruit is gonna be much better for breakfast than anything else. But they were both wrong because smoothies were the best. So I guess raw till four wins in a way. There's other reasons why people gain weight on raw till four that I'm not gonna talk about here, but please let me know if you're interested. And some of you, especially those of you who've been following my videos for a while, are probably wondering, well, wait a minute, what's happening with fiber? Because as we know, calories are not the whole story, like ever. <laughs> and there are some big differences between smoothies and juice and fresh fruit in terms of the amount of fiber in them. And if you've watched my other videos, then you probably know that having more fiber actually decreases the amount of calories you can absorb from your food. So literally eating 200 calories plus fiber ends up equaling less calories than having 200 calories with no fiber. And so the next study I'm sharing with you really quickly looked at how much fiber was left after blending fruit into a smoothie or after juicing it into juice. And they found that surprisingly, blending your fruit into a smoothie left the fiber like completely intact as far as your digestion is concerned. There was the same amount of fiber in the smoothie and the ratio of soluble to insoluble fiber was the same. So I actually used to think that blending fruit into smoothies was bad for how the fiber might get digested, but it looks like I was wrong and it's not the case. And that's why we always need to go to the studies because sometimes intuition is just wrong. In fact, the authors say, and I quote, this indicates that smoothie processing would offer similar benefits to whole fruit to consumers. And that's just a fancy way of saying smoothies are just as good for people in terms of fiber as fresh whole fruit is, like the equivalent fresh whole fruit. So for example, if you eat an apple plain or you blend that apple into a smoothie, it'd be kind of a weird smoothie, but you do you, it would be about the same amount of fiber and the same benefits to you. However, this is not the case for juices. So if you've ever juiced before, then you know that you put your fruit through the, the shoot, the fruit shoot, and then it shoots out juice and it shoots out a bunch of pulp. And what's in that pulp is the fiber from the fruit. And so it kind of varies by study and by the juicing method, but generally the maximum amount of fiber you're gonna have left in juice is about 10% that the whole fruit has. So if you take an apple and you juice it, you're only gonna have about 10% of the fiber in that apple juice, as you would have from drinking the apple smoothie or eating the apple whole. Of course, if you like juices, you should still drink them. I love juice. I get so much fiber in my diet that I don't really need more. Like some days I get 60 grams of fiber. I was averaging nearly 80 for a few months. I eat a lot of lentils and whole grains. But because of that, I actually enjoy having some low fiber foods just to get some extra nutrients in without being too full. And I love carrot and apple juices. So if you're really trying to lose weight or increase your fiber intake, then I do suggest having more smoothies compared to juices. But if you love juices and they make you happy, then you should drink them. And now be sure to hit the notification bell below because in my next video, I'm going to tell you about how you should be going about drinking your smoothies to actually eat less and lose more weight. And in addition to that, I'm going to be talking about liquids versus solids more generally and how they affect how much you eat in the current meal and later. So I really hope this video can convince you that smoothies are awesome. I have them at least three times a week, up to 10 times a week in the summer. I find that the more smoothies I have, the more I lose weight just without trying. It's just kind of how it works. If I had to choose one food that I could eat besides potatoes, it would probably be smoothies. <laughs> potatoes are like my lifeblood, my ancestry, they're who I am. I can't give them up, but if it weren't for them, I'd choose smoothies. <laughs> and now I'd love to hear from you on whether you prefer smoothies, juice, or fresh fruit, or no fruit. So comment below, and if you're feeling generous, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. It makes a big difference to me and helps us show more people that Losing weight can be easy and painless and does not need to involve restricting or not drinking smoothies, for example. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time.